Bankers, lawyers, and executive vice presidents. Serious surfers say these suits are a menace on the ocean. They show up with the most expensive gear, but they don't know how to call a wave and don't understand right away or lane claim. Maybe Moondoggy can conduct a few seminars. And if you just can't focus in on that flounder, consider exposing yourself to Nikon's underwater photography cruise. You sail the Caribbean for a week, take lots of underwater pictures, you might even learn how to make a fish smile. Contact Waterhouse Photographic Tours at 1-800-272-9122. Coming up, let the good times roll in New Orleans. But first, a heavenly honeymoon spot, beautiful Bermuda. The islands of Bermuda have long been a favorite of honeymooners and vacationers. Mark Twain found them so beautiful that he said, you go to heaven, I'll stay right here. And one look at Bermuda, I think you'll see why. Shangri-La, paradise. I'd say it's a place where there's no unemployment, no income tax, and where the most taxing thing is spreading out the beach towel and soaking up the sun. This is Bermuda, the closest I've come to Shangri-La. Want two words? Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> the Bermudas are a series of 140 islands, but altogether they add up to only 21 square miles. Greater New York City, by comparison, is 15 times larger. And where do you find Bermuda? Not in the Caribbean, as you may believe. It's about 600 miles off the coast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, two hours by plane from New York City. Although it's located technically in the North Atlantic, Bermuda basks in the warm Gulf Stream. The average winter high temperature here is 68 degrees, and the sun shines at least part of the day, 351 days during the year. Bermuda has been a British colony for 375 years. Although it's self-governed, it maintains strong British ties. Bobbies patrol the streets of towns that are distinctly British in character. Nice place. It's classy. You know, it has a real English style to it. The architecture, the houses, it's beautiful. Once you get an eyeful of its emerald water and beautiful beaches, what will strike you most about Bermuda is the attitude of its people. They exhibit a real pride in what they have here, and they take impeccable care of it. They know from where their bread and butter comes. 75% of their annual billion-dollar economy is tourism. And tourism is kept in check at about a half a million visitors each year. Hotel construction was halted in 1972. The number of cars is regulated, one per family. The idea is to keep everything small and manageable and maintain the Bermuda standard of living. The 57,000 Bermudians enjoy the world's highest standard of living. The Honorable John Swan is premier of Bermuda. Bermuda has, I think, what everyone perceives life might have been a number of years ago. It has a sort of nostalgic feeling about it. Uh, it captures a part of everyone's dream to pass. There is little question that you will find something of a tropical Shangri-La here, but keeping things small inhibits competition, keeps prices high. You will find, on the average, a Bermuda vacation is more expensive than Jamaica, Bahamas, or Hawaii. But here, you do get what you pay for. We are a culture that really makes people enjoy being what it is to be on a vacation. In spite of its small size, Bermuda is long on things to see and do. At one end of the island is the historic town of St. George's, settled in 1609. You will find a number of old forts, such as this one overlooking the capital of Hamilton. At the opposite end of the island from St. George's is the Maritime Museum, where, in addition to the recovered pieces of old shipwrecks, you will catch a glimpse of Captain Little, the salty old caretaker, perfect for the part right down to the peg leg. There's a first-rate dolphin show put on five times each day in a natural cove called Blue Grotto. Nearby, an equally first-rate aquarium displaying the attractions from the waters off Bermuda. If you're up to it, there is Gibbs Hill Lighthouse. 185 steps, about a five-minute climb, take you to the highest point in the Bermudas.
You'll find quite a few surprises in your travels around Bermuda, and one of the more interesting is about a million and a half years old, and if it gets too warm for you up there above ground, come on down here, where it's always a cool 68 degrees. Leamington and Crystal Caves, as with all the above-mentioned sites, are perfect, especially if you're here with children. Unlike any other place you will visit, here you will find no rental cars. In fact, in Bermuda, tourists are not allowed to drive cars. There are about 13,000 of these little mopeds here on Bermuda. Most of them are for rent. It's the most popular way for the tourists to get around, and it can be, if you're not careful, the fastest way next to a bad sunburn for you to absolutely ruin your vacation. In Bermuda, the traffic moves to the left. Learning to stay to the left, especially in some of these confusing traffic circles, is difficult. Helmets are required, and traffic is held to 20 miles per hour. You're advised to keep your eyes on the road and not on the beautiful scenery. If you want to view the scenery, pull over and stop. My favorite way to see the sights is aboard Hamilton's horse-drawn carriages. Bermuda is the oldest British colony, and this is a nice way to see part of it. Plan to see another part of it from the water, something you can handle yourself, or you can charter a fishing boat and go after a trophy-sized marlin. Bermuda ranks near the top of my list of romantic, beautiful getaways. It's not inexpensive, but it's definitely worth every penny. After all, you'll be enjoying a place about which Mark Twain said, You go to heaven, I'll stay right here. Bermuda is a great setting for honeymoons and weddings. In fact, there's a church for almost every day of the year. Weddings are easy to arrange through government offices in Hamilton, and most hotels offer romantic vacation packages. For instance, we found one that includes six nights lodging with champagne, flowers, all meals, and a motor scooter for $1,900 per couple. Airfare is extra. Round trip from New York City to Bermuda starts around $265. From Los Angeles, it's $580. U.S citizens don't need a passport to go to Bermuda, but it's necessary to bring proof of citizenship, a voter's registration card, or birth certificate. Up next, get ready for Mardi Gras Madness in New Orleans. Ooh, the toe-tapping sound of Dixieland jazz. Music that got its start, by the way, in America's favorite party town. Way down yonder in New Orleans, our next stop. What's the first thing that comes to mind when someone mentions New Orleans? Mardi Gras! Well, join the crowd. This famous celebration has been an annual event in New Orleans for nearly three centuries and just seems to get more spectacular with each new year. Mardi Gras comes from the French and literally translates as Fat Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday that begins the Christian observance of Lent. Mardi Gras has to be one of the greatest free shows on earth, and yet it's only one of many good reasons to visit New Orleans. You'd have to go to Europe to find a city that equals New Orleans in history, culture, architecture, or cuisine. New Orleans lies at the mouth of the Mississippi River and is one of the world's great port cities. It was founded by the French nearly 60 years before the American Revolution and became part of the United States when we purchased Louisiana from the French in 1803. Today you can explore some of the region's colorful history aboard one of these old paddle wheel steamboats. I found the Chalmette Battlefield an interesting stop. This is where Andrew Jackson defeated the British Army during the War of 1812. I think it makes me appreciate being American a little bit more. The historic heart and soul of New Orleans is its legendary French Quarter. Designed in 1721 by a French military engineer as a fortified city, the quarter retains its old world charm despite the ravages of time. Street names 
will remind you that this city was once ruled by the Spanish, as well as the French, and has been the home of many races and nationalities. The mixture produced a culture that is distinctly New Orleans. The French Quarter used to be a haven for artists and writers. Few can afford to live here now, but they still come to absorb the atmosphere and market their work. The French Quarter is a good place to hunt for antiques, or enjoy some espresso and pastry at one of the many sidewalk cafes. There are a few places in the world where I've felt so comfortable and so welcome. The people, the cab drivers, just everybody is so sweet and friendly, and it's such a mixture. It's like a, it's like almost a European city, I think. There is even a European-style open-air farmer's market in the French Quarter, where you can buy almost anything, from locally grown produce to a genuine alligator skull. To understand how the city of New Orleans grew after it was Americanized in the early 19th century, board the New Orleans and Carrollton Railroad, where it begins in the French Quarter, and ride down St. Charles Avenue. It's the oldest streetcar line in the U.S., and will take you through the Garden District, once a suburb of New Orleans. Here you will see magnificent old Victorian mansions built by wealthy Americans who settled here after the Louisiana Purchase and sought a place apart from the crowded central city and its Creole culture. There are more than a score of museums in New Orleans, but this is my favorite, the Jazz Museum in the old U.S. Mint Building. It memorializes the fact that this city gave birth to the first authentically American music. <laughs> But jazz is more than just a fact of history here in New Orleans. It's a living legacy. To appreciate this, you need only walk the streets of this city. Everyone, it seems, is a musician. The music has been really good here, and uh, you know, not only are even the street bands are better than a lot of the bands you get in other places playing jazz. If Dixieland jazz nourishes the heart of New Orleans, Creole cooking nourishes its stomach. This city is justly famous for its many fine restaurants. Reason enough to want to return on a regular basis. Here in Louisiana, we have the Gulf Coast, and we can get our seafood fresh daily. And of course, the spices. I mean, you can't imagine the difference it makes with the, uh, the spices that we use. 